Hey, it's Joel, and with any 3D printer, it's a tool, and it always needs maintenance. And that's why we've got the Pulse XE right here. Uh, the bed wiggles a little bit more than it should, so we need to do some maintenance on this. And the maintenance is going to be replacing the bearings along the smooth rods, and we're going to do it right here. I'm 3D Printing Nerd. Ah, welcome back. The printer itself still performs well, but the bed does shake, and I caught it on video. In the video, I'm trying to print something in just standard PLA, and when the bed is doing some quick moves, it rattles like no one's business. Is there a better metaphor for rattling? It rattles like a snake. Like a snake? Sure. That sounds terrible. It rattles like Rattlebot 5000. So what I've done is I've reached out to Matter Hackers, and I've said, hey, the bed rattles. I think the bearings are bad because the bed just kind of shifts back and forth like this. Everything is tight except the bed and the bearings, and so my diagnosis was new bearings, Matter Hackers agreed, and they sent over some new bearings. We're gonna get them installed. Should be fun. Let's get to work. So to do this, first what I wanna do, and I think this is the right way to do it. On the bottom of the machine, you can see where the belt interfaces with the bed, and that's what moves the bed back and forth. What we can do is take the belt out of this little holder. Awesome. With the bed free of the belt, it means that I can undo these two bolts in the, or these four, these four screws in the back, so I can undo these and these and these and these. The smooth rods can then come out, and then the bed can come out, and we can take a look at it. We're still tethered via the thermistor and the heater, but it shouldn't be a problem. I don't think it snapped, did it? Look at that. We have access to the bed now. These are the bearings here. Here's the live test, right? So if I put it in there. Oh, it kind of. It falls right through. It's a bearing. It works. Yeah, that's right. So there's wiggle back yeah. and forth, right? Yeah. So if I take a smooth rod and I, and I put it in there, it should not wiggle. There is no play in that. Oh, gosh. The only movement that we, that we see there is just you moving it back and forth. Yeah. It's not actually moving within the... My, my meaty fingers here don't really hold on to it too well. Gotcha. But uh, I can tell that there's no, there's no play in the bearing on the smooth rod itself. There's a, there's a noticeable difference in the way it felt. A very, very noticeable difference. Which is exciting because it means my diagnosis was correct. So now what I have to do... Let's see. Sean, can you see these? I can. These three bearings are held on by three U-bolts, and the nuts on either side aren't easy to get to because this has, behind the Garolite surface, a build tack magnet, which is cool because removable build plates are cool, but it also means that the wrench that I use likes to stick to it. Oh, wait. It's not sticking to it. Well, here's another thing the internet can help me with. So this is the BuildTac magnetic sheet, and uh, it sticks to it there, right? Yeah. It doesn't stick to it on the back unless the spring steel is on it, and then it has some grab. You know, we're learning things today. Let's see. I know it's righty tighty sure? lefty loosey. Yeah. But you know, when it's when it's upside down, I don't know. Some things confuse me easily, and that's one of them. I always have to look skyward and be like, oh. And you don't want to over-tighten this because the U-bolt can crush the bearing. That's one of the things that I've learned. Not from personal experience, I haven't crushed bearings yet because I haven't ordered the Bearing Crushinator 5000, but just don't tighten it too much. I'm gonna put the smooth rod in. Now that, it's, now that the new one's attached, I just want to see if there's wiggle. There's just like like a micrometer of, of wiggle compared to the last one. Oh, feels good. This is probably gonna be the most boring part of the video. So Sean will put up some images of, uh, of himself running marathons. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, uh, and how tight is, is too tight? Uh, one of the things that you can do when putting the smooth rod into the bearing is if uh, it doesn't slide smoothly or freely. So this one has a nice, easy motion to it, whereas if it was too tight, it could be kind of stopping along the way. Let's see. 
those are gonna go in right there. So right here, you can see that this metal piece right here, the smooth rods actually go into the metal piece and they rest on metal and these 3D printed parts are the caps that are on top. A large contingent of people don't like fully 3D printed printers because they think that the, the plastic can wear over time and then uh, they wouldn't be able to print because these into plastic would work. Oh, look at that, the magnet held it. And what's great is because they're just caps and they're not actually holding it in place, then I don't have to wrench tighten anything. I can hand tighten and be totally fine. I hope that's not foreboding or foreshadowing. Same word. What's the difference between foreboding and foreshadowing? All right, foreshadowing is, is the actual literary term. So when, when an author uses it, when an author does something to set something up later or says something or whatever, that's the foreshadowing. Foreboding is an actual feeling of evil or dread to come. Oh, well, huh. this has been a very learning filled video. Now the problem was I, I have to use my finger or my thumb to hold on to the small nut. <laughs> that does seem like a problem. We are in and let's see, let's turn it around. You ready? Yeah. Let's just see if we, if we wiggle. No, we don't. That's awesome. No, we don't. I'm like a DJ. So the hardest part really for me is always attaching the belts back because they need to be nice and tight. I do have uh, right here on the printer, it would be, it'd be really cool if that was a tensioner. So if this wasn't just a solid piece in place, if it was a, a way to tension it, I think if I loosen the screws a little bit, there's a little bit of give, but I don't, it's not, it's not built that way. Uh, the, the GT2 belt here goes into these little spots and uh, essentially what you do is you make a loop with it and then the teeth on the belt hold it in place. It's not easy. Being green. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? Thanks for that. That was beautiful. Was it? Yeah. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Oh, no. Wiggle, wiggle. No? Okay. There we go. That's a good wiggle test. That's fantastic. Wow. It does flex a little bit, and that could just be that the bearing against the rubber is flexing a little bit. Sure. Maybe I could tighten it down a little bit more, but I mean... Ooh. What I miss? What I miss? What I miss? <laughs> I missed something. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Oh, that's not good. No, no, no. Let's undo the belt and let's see. And now okay. it's going, so the, was the belt too tight? Uh, could have been, I guess. Okay, that should be a little bit better. Yep, a little bit better, a little bit tighter. The Pulse XE is now repaired. It's now uh, fixed. So a big thanks to Matter Hackers. I, I mean, they they honor, oh, they have a warranty on this machine and obviously it falls under warranty, but it was really cool to get these shipped out pretty quick. California isn't too far away from Washington. So it only took them a day. That doesn't wiggle anymore. So what I'm gonna do now, get it hooked up, get it printing. I'll try to print the same model and the same material and we shouldn't have any wiggle wiggle problems. So. Uh, with that in mind, let's go get it printing and uh, we'll see you in a bit. Day two. Hey, we're back. And as you can tell, there's been a lot of troubleshooting that we had to do in order to get to this because we started here. But let's start right here. So the original material and the reason that we saw problems was this print right here. This was the original print and it looks, honestly, it looks like garbage. It's a hot pile of garbage. It was printed with Maker Geeks. Uh, Maker Geeks uh, Raptor Series PLA. This was the stuff that Snapple sent me. It was kind of them, but they didn't know that Maker Geeks is actually a horrible company that doesn't exist anymore. This was printed with the Maker Geeks Raptor PLA Orange. And like I said, it looks like crap. I thought originally because of the bearings, it was wobbling and that's what was creating the inconsistencies and the badness of this model. But as you can tell, that wasn't just the case. First, we tried a different material. This is Matter Hacker's Build Series PLA and this completes the ecosystem, which is important for this example right here because I was using Matter Hacker's materials, the Matter Hacker's slicer, Matter Control, and I'm using the Matter Hacker's Pulse XE platform. 
This was using the Build Series PLA, and it also shows signs of there being some badness in the print. Sean, look at that. Oof, that's, that's rough. That's, it's wiggly. It's, it, yeah, it's super wiggly. It's super wiggly. And I decreased the size 50% because I figured I didn't need to use as much material. We were troubleshooting. So with this, this was the Matter Hackers Build Series PLA. That was having a problem. So we went over to this. I spoke with Taylor at Matter Hackers and he said, ooh, in Matter Control, can you try turning off thin walls? In Matter Control, there is a function like in other slicers that if a wall is too thin to print, it will expand that wall in order to make it printable. I turned off that option and Sean, how's that look? Wiggly. And it's got some wiggles to it. Yeah. It's definitely got some wiggles to it. Next up. In talking with Taylor, he said, hey, why don't you take the retraction down? It's at four millimeters right now. Why don't you take it down to two? And the thinking here was perhaps retraction wasn't happening exactly as it should be. And as it brought the filament back down to the nozzle quickly, it maybe rammed it and spit out a little bit of extra filament. And with this model, there could be a bunch of retraction. So I went ahead and tried that. And Sean, how does that look? Wiggly, but almost complete. It was so close. Well, yeah, some of these are in different stages of completeness because I just didn't, I, you I didn't you were, the computer. You, I didn't want, you were watching them? I yeah. wasn't watching them. Okay. We moved to this. This was, uh, this is now on my own right here because it was the weekend and Taylor was off having fun with his family like he should be. This, I turned off avoid crossing perimeters. And so in the slicer, if you have this option set, and I know other slicers have this option, the nozzle will go outside of the external perimeter and it will follow along the perimeter if it, needs to, if it needs to get from point A to point B. And the reason it does that is to reduce the chance of there being some ooze that sticks to the outside of the model. Because if it never leaves the perimeter of the model, that ooze will stay inside. So I tried it for this, and Sean, how does that look? <sighs> wiggly. Yeah, it's wiggly. We tried though, we definitely tried. From here, I went with this one. This is acceleration turned down to 1000. The standard acceleration values in matter control for the Pulse XE are 3000, I believe. Uh, 3000 millimeters squared, something like that. And so acceleration is, I believe, how fast the nozzle gets up to speed when it's making a movement. And there's, there's acceleration for printing and acceleration for travel. Those values, I set everything to 1000 and I printed this out. And Sean, how does that look? Better, but still wiggly. Still wiggly. So we went extreme and I said, set all of the acceleration values to 100. 100. That includes printing acceleration and travel acceleration. Sean, how does that look? Again, you know, I don't think it looks much different than the, than the 1000, to be it honest doesn't. with you. It doesn't. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. But you could definitely tell as it's printing. It's so typically a print head will go when it's travel. This one's going because the oh. acceleration was so low. Yeah, right. But I thought maybe the acceleration was causing wiggle, and sure. unfortunately, that wasn't it. That's not it. So what I did is I was printing at 0.5 speed multiplier, and it was wiggly at the bottom, and then I changed it to 0.25 speed multiplier, essentially cutting the speed back to a quarter of what full speed was. How does that look towards the bottom? Looks, looks, looks the same. And then how does that look a little bit higher up, above the wiggles? You know, looking much better, actually. Compared, it is, isn't it? Compared to the bottom. Compared to the bottom. So I went with it, and I said, let's print the entire model with 0.25 on the speed multiplier. And this is what we got. Now, it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it is considerably better. Plus, uh, I bet if I turned on avoid crossing perimeters, I bet I could take care of some of that stuff in there. Or I just hit it with a heat gun. Sean, how does that look to you? I like it. Uh, I wouldn't display it yet, but uh, it's much better. Much it's much, better. much better. Yes. It's much, much better. I don't know exactly what's happening within the matter control slicer that's causing it to go outside of the bounds when it's printing at full speed. In that, uh, I, I told that to Taylor, and Taylor said, wow, this is great. Send me the model. We're always looking for incredible models, great models, fun models to troubleshoot our slicing algorithms with. So I sent him the model. And what's great about this is this is all within the Matter Hackers ecosystem. So the developers will use this as a test. They will do test prints. They will adjust and fix the slicing algorithm within Matter Control, and then the free update will come out. Heck, they'll probably get it finished before Simplify 3D has a chance to even ignore one of my tweets. <laughs> 
Womp womp. So this is a better representation of how this should look. And this was printed on the Zmorph VX using Voxelizer, their slicer, and using their brand of PLA. And again, it's not perfect. It's not perfect, but it is a much better representation of how this model should look. They did forget a top layer. Look at that. Oh no. I know, it's, it's not. Uh, did it forget it or did it just melt it a little bit at I the top? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But at this point, this model is now topless and not safe for work. That was a terrible dad joke, wasn't it? Was, it? It, was, yeah, it, was, it was pretty good. That was actually. a terrible dad joke. So here's where we stand with this. I think the Pulse XE is now fit for printing. We've replaced the bearings and it doesn't wiggle anymore. That doesn't wiggle. So we're good to go and we can start getting more prints done on this. I think what I have discovered though is a great model to troubleshoot and test printing, slicing, and filaments with. So this, along with the Wexter Mini Joel, are going to be added to the standard prints that I use to evaluate machines. And you'll have a bunch more machine evaluations coming up over the coming months. But for now, I hope this was interesting because what we did was troubleshoot a problem with a 3D printer. And we replaced hardware that we knew wasn't good and then once that hardware was replaced, we threw a tough model at it and using the software, we were able to do a bunch of test prints that eventually told a story and we have an example of what it should look like. So if you have the Pulse or the Pulse XE or this Matter Hackers hardware platform and you're using Matter Control, this will get fixed for this model very soon. Oh, you know what? You know what? What? Uh, before I forget, someone out there is gonna say, your belts are too tight or your belts are too loose. And uh, I judged the belt tightness to this machine here. And I, I compared it against the Prusa i3 Mark III. And it has very, very similar belt tightness on X and in Y. And that machine is able to produce the model. So I don't think this is having to do with the tightness of the belts on the machine. I know some people might see this as a failure. Right, some people might see this as a failure, but I, I love that. This is the whole point of having this, this mechanism for updating software. And it's, I, I get the feeling it's not just me. If anyone had had this issue with matter control, I get the feeling matter hackers would have taken it in and implemented software fixes. So we'll put a link down to the model in the description. And uh, I'd love to see what you print it with. Tag me on Twitter, I'm at Joel Telling. Tag Sean too, he's at? The Sean Connolly. The Sean, you're, you're such a thing. Well, you know what? Over here is a video that YouTube's gonna suggest to you. Over here, well, that's what I'm suggesting to you. Have a watch of those if you have some time. Otherwise, don't forget to hug each other more. I love you all, as always. High five. It's like a guitar string. <laughs> wow. I'm gonna take my horse to no. the old town <laughs> road. Stop. I'm gonna ride till I can't no more. Everything is awful. I got my printers in the back. <laughs> Filament attack. I would have gone with attached Person. there, but but attack is fine too. Yeah. yeah. And cut.